give God praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless your name. Father, we give your name praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, I praise you. Thank you. Father, I bless your name. Father, I glorify your name. Father, I lift you up, God. I praise you. Father, I praise your name. Father, I glorify you. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody stand to your feet and just glorify him. Come on and just magnify the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we praise your name. Father, we glorify you. Father, we magnify you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I praise your name. Father, I glorify you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I praise you. Oh, God, we glorify you. We'd like to welcome you to Victory Tabernacle Bible Training Center, 300 East Hampton Street, Darlington, South Carolina, where the pastors are yours truly, Pastor Kendall and George Fleetwood. We're the pastors and founders of the church, and we are inviting you to come in and join us today for a time of praise and a time to receive the word of the Lord. God is going to meet us today. God is going to bless us on today. Truly, there's a mighty word from the Lord, and there's a mighty praise in the earth on today. We give him praise, we give him glory. Hallelujah to God. Atabasia. Oh God, I praise you. Oh God, before we turn it over to Pastor Joyce. We want to honor and recognize all our leaders. Let's bless God. Come on here for Pastor George Fleetwood. Let's bless God for Elder Sheila Jackson. We thank God for Elder Bonaparte being with us today. Come on. She's been battling some things, but thank God she's here with us today. Let's give God praise for her being here with us. We thank God for Minister Jawan and Minister Joshua Fleetwood, Minister Arnisha Fleetwood. We bless God for Minister Bradford Bristow. Thank God for Sister Ayana being with us today. We thank God for Minister Avery Lagarde. We thank God for Minister Sheree Eli, Minister Jim Jennifer Singletary. Let's bless God for Brother Jerry being with us. Come on, we thank God for him, yes. We thank God for Sister Jackie Mason. Thank God, hallelujah, for Sister Jamika Hemingway. We bless God for Brother Brandon Morrison, Sister Jasmine Morrison. Let's give it up for our leadership today. Hallelujah to God. We're getting ready to go into praise and worship. Come on, let's give it up as our pastor comes before us. Let's bless God for it today. worthy of the praise he's worthy of the glory you're worthy lord jesus you're worthy of the praise we worship your name jesus we magnify your name jesus no one above you jesus we honor your name lord We come to lift up the name of Jesus. We come to worship him. How many know he's worthy? He's worthy of everything that we're to give him today and more. Help us lift it up.
nothing can compare. Hallelujah. With the Holy Spirit, with the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We want to invite him in this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, mm. we 
so good to us, Lord. God, we honor your name, Jesus. We honor your name, Lord. We honor your name, Lord. We honor your name, Lord. God, you've been so good to us. Yes, God. Yes, God. You've been so good to us, Jesus. Come on, lift those hands if you know he's worthy. Come on, lift those hands if you know he's worthy. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. Come on and clap your hands and shout unto God right now if you know he's worthy. How many people are excited for what God is going to do in this time and hour? The song says, I'm expecting great things. How many of you are actually expecting great things from God? Help us lift it up. Come on, if you're expecting great things, help us sing the song with the excitement. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great That's the entire song. Sing it with us. I'm expecting great things. Yes, we are. I'm expecting great things. Come on, sing it with us. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Great things. Come on, say it again. I'm expecting.
Hallelujah. Somebody read back and say great things. Tell them again and say great things. Oh God, I praise you. Lord have mercy. Somebody go ahead and give God a praise. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. be seated in the presence of the Lord we thank God that we have already acknowledged we have already acknowledged all our leaders in the house let's give it up for Pastor Joyce one more time though Uh, before we go to the word of God I want to read a thank you card from Minister Jawan and Minister Arnisha said Thank you, pastors, for the continued opportunity of planting into first-time homeowners. Thank you for teaching and training us to be a blessing and victory. Thank you to the to everyone that gave to the Fleetwood family during this time. It is greatly appreciated. Minister Jawan and Arnisha, KJ, and Kendasia. So kind, so thoughtful, so appreciated. So nice of you. Thank you to our pastors in the Victory Tabernacle family. Give us, give it up for them. Listen, you didn't have Bibles. Turn to Hebrews 12 and 1. Yeah, keep your Bibles open because you're going to need them for today. I want to cover a lot of ground. I want to say a lot of stuff, but I don't want to take a long time to say what I have to say. Is that all right? How many of y'all enjoying the How Are You Running series? Hallelujah to God. Yes. Well, here we go. Uh, Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, lay us, let us lay aside every weight in the sin that does easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's all I want. I just want the part that said, lay aside every weight, and the sin, and the sin. Is that all right? Proverbs 26, you didn't have Bibles, turn to Proverbs 26 and uh, verse number 13. If I was to use, I want to talk today concerning the sin of slowfulness, and then I want to talk concerning diligent. Is that all right? And if I was to use for a subject 
today, if I was to use, well, let, let's just put it like this. We're going to talk about slowfulness and we'll talk about uh, being diligent. Is that all right? Hallelujah to God. If there is a part B or if there is a part that maybe we would try to exhort you, it would be tell your neighbor the diligent have the ashes. All right, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But right now, I just want to talk about slowfulness, and I want to talk about being diligent. I want to talk about whether you know it or not, to be slowful is saying that. I want to talk about uh, teaching you how to run. And, Pastor, how do I run uh, towards God, and how do I run with God, and how do I do it, Pastor? Well, we first got to lay aside the weight and the sin that easily besets us and the first one of the sins we talked about the sin of fear last week listen I wasn't trying to make anybody to be fearful hallelujah I won't you can't make anybody be fearful you either fearful or you're not fearful is that all right I was not trying to put fear in you but I was trying to teach you what the word of God had to say concerning fear and I was so blessed that over half the church stood up and said pastor I need to be delivered from all my fears is that all right yes yeah, so today we want to talk about the sin of slowfulness because the Bible tells us whatever is not as a faith it is sin and fear is not a faith so it is sin so we're talking about the sin of slowfulness and if you look at Proverbs 26 and 13 it said the slowful man saith, there's a line in the way a line is in the street as the door turneth upon his hinges, so does the slothful upon his bed. He hideth his hand in his bosom, and it grieve him to bring it again to his mouth. So what do we get from this verse? The first thing we get from this verse is that the slothful look for excuses. They have an excuse mentality. Hallelujah. There's not a lying in the way. There's not a lying in the street and if there is a lion in the way or lying in the street God is bigger than your lion and you need to look to overcome your lion uh, hallelujah and so we see that the slothful is looking for an excuse uh, and we see that the slothful verse 14 tells us uh, he won't get up early because he's like a door uh, and he turns from side to side in, in his bed he, he turns like the hinges of a door. He swings backward and forward upon his hinges. But how many of y'all know that door don't never go anywhere? It never gets any farther than swinging back and forward. And a slowful is just like that in the bed. They don't mind turning from side to side. But if God has, has prompted them to get out of that bed to pray, have prompted them to get out of that bed to read your word uh, they're like a door swinging from backward and forward uh, but they, because they can't get out of bed because they are slow for uh. 15 said he hide his hand in his bosom. Uh, he is so lazy uh, that he can't raise his hand to give God praise. Uh, and just what, well, let me back up a little bit. The word slowful uh, come from the Hebrew word at sale. Somebody said at sale. Uh, and it mean to lean idle. Uh, and it also mean the lazy one. Uh, tell your neighbor, the lazy one. Uh, he is so lazy. Uh, he's lazy to raise his hand to give God praise. Uh, he's a he's so lazy uh, that he won't he won't get out of bed uh, to do God's work or to fulfill God's calling. Uh, he is spiritually slowful. He is the lazy one. Listen to me y'all. Uh, he may be anointed but he's lazy. Uh, holly, he may have a call on his life uh, but he's lazy. Uh, slowful people uh, are busy but they're not busy doing what God called them to do. 
Hallelujah to God. The second thing I want to tell you about being slowful is Matthew 25 and 26. Somebody turn there. Matthew 25 and 26. I got a lot of ground to cover. Matthew 25. And I'm going to back up to... Uh, God, I'm going to back up, man. I don't want to read this whole thing. I'm going to back all the way up to verse number 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man travailing into a far country. He called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. He gave one five talents, another two, and another one. Uh, listen, he gives it according to their several ability. Uh, and then he took his journey. And then he that had received the five went and traded the same and made other five. In other words, the one with the five talent, he allowed God to use him and he used those talents and gifts and everything that was placed in him, he used them. And because he used them, God gave him five more talents. And likewise, the, the two, and he gained two. Listen, God did not expect the one with two to gain five. He expect him to use what he gave him to, with his several ability. And to the one that he, to the one that received one huh? he went and he was slowful and he was lazy huh? and he dug in the earth huh? and hid his lord's money huh? in other words he dug in his flesh huh? he found time to do other things huh? he was so busy that he couldn't be about his father's business huh? and look at verse 19 after a long time the lord of the servants come huh? and he reckoneth with them huh? in other words judgment time is coming huh? and he that received the five came and said look I got five too I bought I gained five with the five you gave me and he said, look, uh, holler the Lord said, well done, that good and faithful servant. Uh, you've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you rule over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Uh, and the one that same had two, he said the same thing to him. Uh, but look at verse number 24. Uh, and then he which had the one time, which had the one talent said, Lord, I knew you were a hard man. Tell your neighbor, that's the first lie. Uh, tell your neighbor, he's not a hard man. Uh, Reaping with thou has not sown. Second lie. Huh? Gathering with y'all has with you have not strawed. Huh? Three lies. Huh? So he's lying on the character of God. Huh? He said, and I was afraid and went. He made up three lame excuses. Huh? He said, I was afraid and went and hid my talent in the earth. Huh? And lo, there has though I do have the one that is dying. Huh? And the Lord said unto him, God called him wicked huh? and not only wicked but he called them slow for huh? he said listen here huh? how many he said now if you knew this huh? if this is what you saying how I am huh? tell your neighbor God is not like this huh? he said but if this was your perception of me huh? thou knew that I reap where I sow not huh? and I gathered where I have not strawed huh? if you're telling me this is how I am huh? well why didn't you go huh, and put your money to the exchanges huh, and then when I came huh, I would receive my own with usury huh. how, if, that, if, that's you, if that's you saying how I am huh, how come you didn't do nothing with it, that one talent that I gave you huh? he said take the talent from it huh, and give it to the one with ten huh. everyone that have shall be given huh, and he that shall have abundance from him huh, shall be taken away huh. but verse 30 he said cast the uh, unprofitable servant uh, into outer darkness uh, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of tears uh, he's telling him uh, hallelujah to God you are a slow foe uh, and a wicked servant uh, God called him slow foe uh, and he called him wicked uh, hallelujah because he buried it in the earth that which God had given him. He was slowful. Tied up. I was trying to process it. I was trying to get it together. He neglected his duty. He failed to go forth. The sin of omission. 
He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him is him sin. It is slowful because, come on here, if we know what God requires, how come we didn't meet his requirements? Uh, if he thought that this was what God required of him, uh, he should have been able to take that one and gain three or four. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. We must faithfully use the gifts the talents and the ability that God has given us. Uh, he called him wicked. He called him slowful. And in this New Testament, the word slowful means to delay and to drag one feet. It means to be tardy, to have a reluctant attitude, unwilling to act, unwilling to participate. Hallelujah, unambiguous, disinterested, uh, to tire and to become tired because of vexation from weary waiting. Uh, hallelujah, Pastor, I'm just tired. I've been waiting for a long time. So now you want to drag your feet. Now you're tardy. Now you got a reluctant attitude and you're unwilling to act or participate when it comes to the things of the Lord. Okay, shake your head, say you're just slow for. Unwilling to put the time and the energy in to do God's will. Tell him they were slow for. Tell him the sin of slowfulness. Proverbs 19 and 15. The Bible says slowfulness cast into a deep sleep and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. It is slowfulness that casts us into a deep sleep. This is why we cannot run for the Lord. This is holding us back from running. The Bible said the idle soul, it is the idle soul that shall suffer hunger. Minister Brad, we are sleepwalking through life when we should be running. God has called us to run now, and we're sleepwalking. Huh? We are drowsy and unconcerned about our purpose and about our destiny. And it's high time to awake out of our sleep it is slowfulness that leads to idleness uh, hallelujah to God and when we are idle before God our walk with God is destitute it is bankrupt it is void because we have neglected our duty hallelujah to God we are sleepwalking through life uh, you in church but you sleepwalking you went through praise and worship, but you sleepwalk right on through it. I'll be glad we get to the next part till you sleepwalking. Now, Pastor, when you going to get through, you sleepwalking. You were sleepwalking through life. God has commanded you to run. You are in it is the slowful that cast into a deep sleep. It is the idle soul that shall suffer hunger. I'm using these verses spiritually. You're gonna suffer hunger. Hallelujah. It is your neglect of duty. You are idle. Every last one of us in here have heard from the Lord. Every last one of us in here, God has prompted you to pray prompted you to read your bio prompted you to do something spiritual prompted you hallelujah to God to seek and serve him even more but you sleepwalk Proverbs 21 and 25 the Bible said the desire of the slowful killeth him for his hands refuse to labor the desire of the soulful killeth him yes sir for his hands refuse to labor come on here y'all hallelujah to God take your neighbor the soulful tell him again say the sin of slowfulness yes sir his hand refused to labor unfulfilled desires. The greed and the lust of the sluggard puts him to death. It is unfulfilled desires. 
the desire of the slothful it is killing him hallelujah and these hallelujah the card it is these unfulfilled desires the greed and the lust of the sluggard puts him to death. His hand refused for him to go to labor and it caused him to fall out of the race and to be a casualty in the battle. What are you saying, Pastor? The slowful has his desires and priorities. They all screwed up. Hallelujah to God. And the desire that he has is killing him. His desire to have riches and to have notoriety is killing him. His desire, it is unfulfilled desires of the sluggard that will put him to death. Hallelujah to God and cause him to fall out of the race uh, and become a casualty in the battle because his desires and priorities are all screwed up. Taking yeah. 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 it with the sin of slowfulness. Yeah. Oh, Proverbs 13 and 4. I'm moving through it real good. The soul of the sluggard desire and have nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be fat. The soul of the sluggard desireth and have nothing. But the I'm coming to the New Testament. Just stay with me. Uh, the soul of the sluggard uh, desireth no, nothing. Uh, how many of y'all know the sluggards desire but have nothing? Uh, what are you saying, Pastor? The sluggard, uh, they have a wish. This is how the Holy Ghost gave it to me. Uh, they have a wish but they have no will. Yes, sir, they wish for this and, and wish for that and wish for the other, but they have no will. They have lazy desires, but no diligent endeavors. I hear you talking and you're talking real good, but your talking is not lining up with your walking. Your lazy desire, but you have no diligent endeavors. You say you want to be a millionaire. You say you want to do this and you want to do that. But I don't see, I don't see you being, I don't see hallelujah to God, no diligent effort to save your money. No diligent, I want to say Hey, I want to retire at 45. How can you retire at 45 and every dime hit your hand? It's going up in the air. Every dime hit your hand. You blowing it. Every dime hit your hand. Hey, yes. neighbor, because you a sluggard. Yes, sir. Hallelujah to God, the sluggard. Hallelujah to God. You've got to understand how, Pastor, do I overcome being sluggard? We overcome being a sluggard and, and walking in the sin of slowfulness. We overcome by diligence. Tell you, neighbor, diligence. What is diligence? The word in the Hebrew, diligence means to be sharp and to be determined. How to have a will to reach maturity huh, and to reach fulfillment. Huh? It is diligence huh, that keep us on track. Huh? Keeps us on track. Huh? Hey, Minister Brad, it gives us a second win huh, while we run. Huh? Uh, Minister Jawan, Minister Avery, huh? there have been times we've all been tired before, huh? but it's diligence huh, that gives us a second win. Huh? Hallelujah to God. Come on here. Huh? We run sometimes. Huh? Feel like we can't run it no more. Huh? But when diligence kick in, huh? We overcome slowfulness with diligence. Huh? What you mean diligence? Huh? Tell you never diligence will find a way huh? to do God's will. Huh? Oh God, I praise you. Huh? Oh God, I praise you. Huh? Listen, I'm not, uh, I don't want to mess the message up, but can I make you laugh a little bit? Huh? Hallelujah to God. A lot of, I'm, I'm running up with strangers everywhere. Huh? And as I run up with strangers everywhere, huh? they tell me, man, I tell you, I love her. Huh? 
I just love y'all. I just love y'all Facebook service. I just love the service. Oh, man, that praise and worship, I just love it. Man, I love it. Pastor Fleetwood, y'all be going in, especially during the pandemic. I know we're still in it, but during the first phase of the pandemic, and they were talking as we would meet folks, and, and they would talk, and they would talk. Hallelujah to God. Oh, God, I pray. But in the back of my mind, I would be saying, Tanya, but way in the back of my mind, I would be saying, you didn't like it too much because I never saw where you liked it or loved it. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. Oh, God, I pray. A lot of times, Pastor Joyce would tell me, I didn't see where they ever liked anything. They said how much it was a blessing, but they never liked it. Listen, I don't want to lose you. Don't get lost. I'm going to tell you this to make you laugh. And I told Pastor Joyce, I said, Pastor Joyce, I ain't mad at them. I said, our own members won't even like it. I said, our own members won't even share it. How you expect our visitors to share and like? Hallelujah. I throw that, throw that in for free. You see, Pastor smiling. Ain't mad at you. Hallelujah to God. Huh? The diligent, come on here. Huh? Will witness huh? to the unsaved. Huh? Pastor, how can I witness to the unsaved? Huh? How can let me tell you what I've been doing this week? Huh? I don't know if any of them showed up though. Huh? I've been inviting folks to the virtual service. I ain't talking about sending no text. I'm talking about calling and talking. I've been calling and talking to folk. And folks I know don't go to church. Say, man, we got church at 11 o'clock. Join us, man. Huh? Victory Tabernacle Bible Training Center. Right now, we're really not taking visitors in. Listen, y'all, we ain't turning visitors away, but we ain't exactly inviting them in. Huh? But how many folks in here, you ain't got to show no hands, uh, invited somebody to service at 11 o'clock? Hello up in here. Come on here. Tell your neighbor, don't cost you nothing. They ain't got to leave bed. They can watch the service in their drawers. Hallelujah to God. You can invite somebody to the virtual service. Minister Jawan, how many people? Hallelujah to God from Harbor Freight. Did you invite to 11 o'clock service? Minister Jennifer and Brother Jerry, how many people at that plant? Did you say, watch us at 11 o'clock? Okay, your neighbor, the diligent, huh? will find a way. Huh? How many people have you ministered to huh? that you invited virtually? Huh? How many posts huh? How have you liked or shared huh? so we can get an effective coverage to the masses? Ain't about me. I don't care nothing about no name. I don't care nothing about none of that. Huh? I ain't trying to be popular. I ain't trying to be all that. I don't care about none of that. Huh? Hallelujah to God. Listen, y'all. Huh? How I used to preach in the break room. Huh? Pastor won't let me preach. Huh? I used to preach in the break room. Huh? Hi, Brother Andrew. You know why? Because I was diligent. Huh? I was preaching in the break room, man. Huh? I used to go to nursing homes and preach. Huh? I used to go to house to house witnessing. Huh? I used to call folks not to be nosy, huh? but the call to encourage them in the Lord. Huh? Tell you, but God knows your motive. Huh? Listen, tell you, but the diligent will find a way. Huh? Listen, one, I start getting texts all over the place. God is good. God is real. I start getting all kind of texts. Hallelujah. And the texts was kind of being worrisome a little bit. Huh? And so I said, you know what? Let me call this number and tell them find out who study sending me all these texts. Very encouraging texts. Huh? But I said, man, these texts is what kind of worship huh so i call that number mm. And it was my cousin. Huh? It was my cousin from up north huh? that had called down here and said, man, huh? I, I hate huh? oh, that cousin Mary has passed away. Huh? Hallelujah. I'm going to try to make it. Huh? And because of things that he was not able to make it. Huh? But he got my number locked in. Huh? And he studied sending me texts and texts and texts. Huh? And it was got to the place it was a little annoying. Huh? And so I called. I said, who is this sending me all these texts? Uh, and he said man this your cousin Nathan uh, and he said listen here he said pastor I'm just doing the Lord's work 
Woo. Uh, he said I'm doing the Lord's work uh, he said I'm trying to encourage whoever I can along the way uh, he said I try to send out as many uh, uh, spiritual inspirational texts that I can send to whoever I can send all day long man I backed up I said thank you cuz for the Texas that was his way and he you can't tell him that he ain't doing the Lord's work hallelujah to God we was at Walmart uh, and as we was at Walmart we was at the Walmart not the one by the mall but the other Walmart in Florida and as we were putting our groceries in a lady came knocking on Pastor Joy's window and I was in the back putting the grocery in I said Lord Jesus what does she want and Pastor Joy looked at me and said in other words they handle this uh, and I went to the lady I said ma'am can I help you uh, and she handed me a track and I said okay hallelujah to God I was saying to myself okay this is a Jehovah Witness track huh? and I opened it up huh? and it said God is love huh? God so gave huh? God huh? so loved us that he gave his only begotten son huh? and I opened the track huh? and she looked at me and said do you know Jesus huh? and sweat was running down huh? the size of her face huh? her hair was wet huh? from handing out tracks in the parking lot huh? and I looked at the track beautiful track huh? and I gave her the track back huh? I said ma'am listen I know the Lord huh? I said this is a beautiful track huh? I don't want you to waste the track on me huh? I said but I just want you to know huh? Hi, that I'm praying for you huh? and you go in the strength of the Lord huh? you doing a great work huh? and keep on doing what you're doing huh? and when I got back in the car I felt the need to repent huh? and I felt the need to tell that lady give me some of these tracks huh? let me help you hand out to pass out some she won't looking for nobody's pulpit because she was diligent hallelujah to God we're sitting up with our slowful selves waiting for a pulpit diligence is an immediate attention to an assigned task But the dealer, man, these people, whether you know it or not, they were preaching the word. They were carrying the gospel. Hallelujah to God. My cousin Nathan is carrying the gospel. Hallelujah. It's more than carrying the gospel than being up here. God is bigger than up here. You can't limit God to this. That's why I ask y'all. Who invited somebody to virtual? Yes. Could somebody go back and say, man, I, I, I went to y'all virtual service and I want to give my life to the Lord. Tell you that's a soul for you. Yes, yes sir. Hallelujah to God. But you've got to be diligent. Uh, you've got to be diligent. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, hallelujah to God we went in uh, and we were praying for pastors across the land. Hallelujah to God and as we began to pray for pastors uh, hallelujah to God I made a list of about 50 pastors uh, and I was praying about five other pastors just popped up out of my head and I prayed for them and one of them God said you better call them because uh, I got a word for them. Uh, what exactly was he going to say I really didn't know but I learned to trust God uh, and I had to I'm telling I had to dig and dig to, because they was going through some things where they changing phone numbers and, and man I'm telling you I had to go through some changes to, just to get in contact with them but when I got in contact with them and I gave them and told them what God told me to tell them they said Pastor Fleetwood just last night I was seeking the face of God and I told God I need a word I said, but I want you to know you was the last thing on my mind. Because when I wrote down pastors, your name wouldn't be on the list to pray for. Hallelujah to God. I knew I had to get in touch with you this morning. Tell you neighbor, because it being diligent. Tell you neighbor, it is diligent. Huh? The diligent will find a way. The diligent don't look for excuses. But the diligent gets up in the morning and say, God, you will use me today. 
Whether it's encouraging the boss man, whether it's encouraging somebody at break, whether it's encouraging somebody in the weight room, whether it's encouraging somebody in the exercise room. I'm telling y'all when I go to that gym, it's more to it than just lifting weights. I'm telling you, I'm encouraging folks. I'm lifting folks up. Holly, I'm being a source of encouragement. Hallelujah to God. It's, y'all know when I stuff I don't know, I don't know. And I stay out of stuff I don't know. But if I ever tell you the apple red, tell your neighbor it's red. Hi, oh, brother, that hey, pastor, I don't know what to do. I'm in a Twix, babe. Can you tell me what I need to do in this situation? And I said, I normally don't get into this stuff, but here, throw it on me. And when they throw it on me, I said, I know exactly what it ought to do. You ought to do this. He said, my wife tried to tell me that. I said, there you go. You got your answer. Yes, I tell you, but God wants to use you. Uh, hallelujah to God, wherever you go. Hallelujah to God. You're not just there, Brother Andrew, to sell houses. Uh, Minister Juan, you're not just there to put a label on a part. Uh, hallelujah, Minister Jennifer. Hallelujah. You're not just there to do what you do. Brother Jerry, you're not just there. Minister Cherie, you're not just there. Brother Cedric, you're not just there to do what you do. But when you walk through the door, I'm I'm going to earn a paycheck today, but God's going to use me to affect somebody's life today. Okay, now, when I was a child, I didn't understand what it meant. I remember we went down south. We went from Jersey to down south for a weekend visit. And, man, I was excited to go. We're going, to, we're going down south. We're going down south. Keep in mind, now, we're just going for the weekend. I'm ready to come back after the weekend over now. Holly, but we're going down south, and I can't wait to go. We're going to have a good time when we get down there. But we had a brother from the church. I probably was 10, and he was 18 or 19. And the only thing he worried about, I was I thought he was crazy he said man I tell you I, I just don't want this trip to be in vain man uh, I just want to be a blessing to somebody and I'm looking at him like man we can't have fun man we should have left you where you was at hallelujah and we used to call back in the day we used to call folks that was really serious about God he dedicated but actually he was diligent is that all right he just dedicated he don't laugh at nothing man he kind of dedicated uh, hallelujah to god uh, well he was the one on the trip and that's all he was talking about i tell you i just want to be a blessing that's one of the ones my grandfather cursed out uh, hallelujah what are you doing here i don't know him huh hallelujah he went in uh, and i kind of felt bad for him because i tell it hurt his feelings uh, hallelujah to god but listen i did i did tell granddad you need to apologize to, to him uh, hallelujah to god come on here huh? hallelujah to God, huh? but you've got to understand it's the diligent. Huh? The Bible said the diligent soul shall be made fat. It is the diligent that shall become prosperous. It is the diligent that shall be satisfied. There's a second meaning to that, but I'll come back to that later. Is that all right? I got to move. I got still got some ground to cover. Will y'all stay with me? Look at somebody say, stay with Pastor. I hope I'm saying something. Am I saying something here? Uh, Hebrews, the sixth chapter uh, and verse number 10. Uh, the Bible said, come on here. Uh, God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. I'm in the New Testament now, uh, which you show toward his name uh, and that you minister to the saints and do minister. Uh, we desire that every one of you do so the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Uh, that you be not slow for, uh, but follows of them through faith and patience. Uh, inherit the promises of God huh? listen God will not forget you nor neglect you nor will he overlook you huh? he said I Paul said that our desire huh, is that everybody go forth with the same diligence huh? and this word in the New Testament diligent tell your neighbor sp say speed over Yes, sir. Uh, sound like it, don't it? Huh? It means to move quickly or swiftly, uh, to show action, to show earnestness, uh, enthusiasm, uh, full effort uh, by making haste. Uh, tell your neighbor, speedy diligence uh, to.
to obey, to quickly obey uh, what the Lord reveals uh, is his priority. Uh, it means to walk in priority. Listen, I don't want to leave you, lose you here. Uh, it means to elevate the better over the good. Uh, tell you about, I got to learn to live in better. Uh, to elevate the more important uh, over the important. Uh, with earnestness, swiftness, and intensity uh, oh God I pray uh, what are you saying pastor turn to Luke 9 and 57 uh, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about pastor I don't know what you talk about uh, just stay with me okay stay with me uh, let's look at verse 57 and it came to pass uh, that he went his way a certain man said Lord uh, I will follow you wherever you go uh, and Jesus said unto him foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the son of man have nowhere to lay his head uh, and uh, listen here uh, Jesus said listen you're saying you're going to follow me wherever you go listen Jesus never asked him to come uh, tell you never he's a volunteer uh, and he's said I'll follow you wherever you go uh, Jesus let him know come on here this ain't gonna be no candy ride uh, Jesus let him know this is not a ride to go get ice cream uh, this is not gonna be a ride to get popcorn and eat popcorn uh, and eat cotton candy uh, he said listen foxes have holes uh, and the birds of the air have nests uh, but the son of man uh, ain't got nowhere to lay my head uh, I'm telling you this is a journey of poverty uh, I'm talking about Jesus Jesus, huh? I've got to live a poverty stricken life huh? so th those coming after me can be rich huh? you can follow me huh? but on this journey it ain't going to be pretty huh? you can follow what Jesus is trying to tell huh? you don't know what you're getting yourself into you ever see folk doing a bunch of talking but they don't know what they're getting themselves into hallelujah to God come on here huh? and so now here's another one huh? but Jesus invokes him in huh? he said follow me huh? but he said Lord suffer me to go huh? to bury my father huh? and so how many know listen tell you ain't nothing wrong with burying the father huh? tell you ain't nothing wrong with that huh? tell you but that's a good thing huh? to go bury your father huh? but I want to tell you something better huh? is when Jesus said follow me huh? you need to follow him huh? tell you never said that was the better huh? over the good huh? we've got to learn huh? to live in the better a huh? lot of us doing a lot of good things huh? but to get the anointing in our life huh? to have purpose in our life we need to be doing the better he said let the dead bury the dead but you come and you preach the kingdom of God. And then another said, Lord, he's a volunteer. I will follow thee. But let me first bid farewell to them that which at home at the house. I got to go home and say goodbye to everybody. Jesus said, man, no man put his hand to the plow. Look back. It's fit for the kingdom of God. Listen, that's a good thing that you want to go home. But you got to do the better. A lot of times we're doing a lot of important stuff but a lot of times we got to drop the important stuff huh, and elevate to the more important huh, how with earnestness and swiftness huh, and intensity I like to get up in the morning and clean my house and tell you neighbor ain't nothing wrong with it cleaning your house tell you never God wants you to have a clean house that's the important thing but if you if you heard the long clock ring and you didn't get up and you got that extra shirt eye and now let me see which one I'm going to do clean the house or am I going to pray Holly, tell you neighbor it's important to clean your house huh? but there's something more important that's pressing huh? I don't need to leave this house without praying huh? I'll clean up when I get back huh? I've got to deal with with the more important over the important. Tell you, it's important. But I know something more important. Yes, sir. Tell you, it's a good thing. But I know something better. And how many know, come on here. We so caught up in good that we can't do better. We so caught up in important that we miss out on the more important. Everybody understand what I'm saying? I didn't lose anybody, did I? Okay, so Hebrews 6 and 12 tells us, watch this. Don't be slowful, My God. but followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promise. 
Diligence delivers us from being slowful. Now, this particular slowful means to be sluggish, slow, lackadaisical, remiss, and just plain slack. He said, but you've got to follow those that have steadfastness, those that have staying power. Because slowfulness, we don't see the other side. It is a sin that easily besets us from running with God. It is diligence that will allow, watch this, y'all. It is diligence. Please write, you need to write this down. Diligence will not allow uh, will not allow procrastination and excuses to bring us to a place of mediocrity. Diligence said you want we're not going there. Diligence said we're not going to procrastinate. We're not going to make excuses uh, because if you're not careful, we're going to end up in mediocrity. Uh, and that's not what God has called us to do uh, is to be mediocre. Uh, tell you, neighbor, God never wanted you to be mediocre at doing anything. Uh, hallelujah to God. You're mediocre because you're slothful. Has anybody ever seen a sloth before? S-L-O-T-H. If you have, throw your hand up. Throw it up high. Who have not ever seen a sloth before? Throw your hand up. An animal called the sloth. I was at a meeting one time. And when I walk and I think scared me. I was walking and, and when I walk, I had to jump. How the lady had a big thing. She was holding a big thing like it was a baby. Like it was a big baby. And hallelujah, he had his arms all draped around her. And I looked, I said, what in the world is that? And I jumped because I was scared. They said, Fleetwood, you ain't never seen a sloth before. I said, never in my life. I looked at the sloth, and it did like that. It took like 10 seconds it went. I said, this thing taking 20 seconds to pull the tongue back. And when they closed their eyes and opened them back up, it took like 10 seconds. They said, a sloth does everything in slow motion. I said, so now I see where we get the word slow for me. I get it now. Hallelujah. I got to better understand. I didn't know there was such an animal called. I didn't learn this till like two years ago. That there was even an animal called a sloth. And I'm somebody that loved to go to the zoo. I know a lot of people like my wife don't like to go to the zoo. I don't want to go to no stinking zoo. Man, I love the zoo. Hallelujah to God. Come on here. Hallelujah to God. But Romans, go to Romans 12 and 11. I want to show you something. I'm almost done. Stay with me, y'all. Let's go to Romans 12 and 11. I want to show you something. Yes, sir. Tell you, there was a sin of slowfulness. Look at Romans 12 and 11. Hallelujah. He tells us not be slowful in business, but to be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And that word there, and when he said, don't be slowful in business. A better word for business here means zeal. Now, if you want to use it like handling business, that's fine. If you want to use it like don't be slow for on the job, well, you can use that that way. God don't want you to be slow for on your job. He don't want you. Come on here. When it comes to the leaderboard, my brother Andrew, you at the bottom. He don't want you at the bottom, Minister Brad. He don't want you, hallelujah, every time there's a promotion come up, they may not choose you, but your name should be coming up. Hallelujah, unless you slow for her, your name ought to be coming up. Dang, I ain't even want it. You ain't got to want it, but your work should speak for you. Will your name at least come up? Come on here. Tell your neighbor, don't be slowful in business. Let, let's use it that way. Don't be slowful on the job. Don't be slowful. But what this word really means is zeal. Huh? If you look it up in the Greek, it means zeal. Huh? Don't be slowful when it comes to zeal. Huh? Hallelujah to God. Don't be slowful when it comes to your father's business. Huh? Don't be slowful in zeal. Uh, but to be fervent in spirit, bawling over with fire and desire, excitement and enthusiasm. Don't lag behind when it comes to diligence. 
Can I tell you how the Lord gave it to me? Can I tell you how a lot of us are? When it comes to the natural, we're flamethrowers. When it comes to the natural man, we, we are fervent in spirit. When it comes to the natural, we are zeal. We are full of zeal. Don't be slowful in zeal. My God, when you on that job, man, you hallelujah to God, you full of zeal. Tell your neighbor, you ought to be full of zeal. Yes, said you ought to be full of zeal. You ought to be full of spirit. Only thing that gets to me, how you a flamethrower in the natural, but when it comes to the spirit, you turn into an Eskimo. How is it when it comes to, come on here, Sister Brittany, how is it you the employee, you the employee of the month? How is it, hallelujah to God. Can y'all hear me over there? Is that speaker on over there? Okay, hallelujah to God. How can you be the employee of the month, one month, hallelujah to God, come on here, and hadn't prayed all week, hallelujah, in your spiritual. How can you have, how you a flamethrower in the natural. Need somebody to work over, I'll do it. Need somebody to clean the coffee machine, I'll do it. That ain't even your, in your job description. It don't matter, I'll do it. You got to do whatever you got to do, child, to work your way up. Man, you a flamethrower. But yet, in the house of God, you got your Eskimo suit on. When it comes to the house of God and the work of God, how, how I see is ice. How can you have fire one day on the job, but ice in the house of God? Full of fire. You want you'll clean up around your workspace. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, I'm sweeping off. I ain't working in no nasty area. For I do anything, I'm going to work. I know Minister Jackson keep the church clean, but I, you ought to have that same spirit when it come to your when it come to your seating area. I can't worship like this. Right, let me get some of this dust off the floor. How is it you a flamethrower? But yet you are an Eskimo driver in the, when it comes to your spirit. When it comes to your spirit, man, you are a flamethrower. Here, take this manual. You got a week to know it. Child, I had that thing down packing two days. I want everybody to know the Lord's prayer by heart. Walking around with a pocket full of ice cubes. Full ice. Tell your neighbor, full ice. Listen, there ought to be fire on the job and fire in the house. Tell your neighbor, fire on the job and fire in the house. If I'm going to be a flamethrower on the job, I'm going to be a flamethrower for God because God gave me the job. I'm going to represent him and represent him well on that job. But when I come to the house of God, ha, come on here. Oh God, I praise you. You a flamethrower in the natural pastor they got me all with minister brother San Quan this job sent them everywhere passed them all up in Paisley my God. well pastor go preach in Fifi that too far here come the Eskimo suit In the spiritual, you are Eskimo, but in the natural, you are flamethrower. But what Romans 12, 11 is trying to tell us is to stay on fire. Hallelujah to God, to stay in fire. Brother Andrew, come on here. Hallelujah to God should not be at the top of the line when it comes to selling houses, but at the bottom of the line when it comes to the house of God. God, I praise you. Come on here. Man, Minister Jennifer name always at the top, John. She make production. And she's probably don't have a job where she have to make production. Man, she make overproduction. Everybody know her name. The big man. The big, big man in California want to know who is this Jennifer Singletary. But God in the house, but in the house of God, God don't know your name. Because remember, hallelujah, that God, come on here, hallelujah. God said, come on here, you come up before me. He said, I never knew you. How is it that God, come on here, we ought to be going so forth with so much zeal that the devil knows our name. Hallelujah, come on here. You remember when they went to cast out the devil, he said, Paul, I know Jesus, I know, but who are you? 
We ought to make so much fuss on the job and we ought to carry ourselves on the job and we ought to be frontline producers on the job till people know our name. But also in the house of God, in the kingdom of God, the devil ought to say, here comes Minister Avery. Don't go in that area. Hey, 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 you going to your mama house? Demons in Hartsville, go, go to the other side. Avery coming through. Come on here, come on here. Hallelujah to God, yes sir. Hallelujah to God, we ought to have fire. We ought to be boiling over with fire, desire. He said fervent in spirit. He ain't talking about the Holy Spirit. He talking about in your spirit. Huh? You ought to have a fire and a an desire and an excitement and an enthusiasm. Huh? Hallelujah, this is what the diligence will do for you. Huh? It will cause you to be on, can't wait to, I was glad when they said let's go to the house house of the Lord. I've got diligent in it and I've got fervor and it brings me to servant's mentality. I belong to God. Everything I own belong to God because diligence will cause me to cross every hurdle and to cross every obstacle. Listen to me y'all. Listen to this. God is looking for ordinary people with diligence toward the things of God to do the exploits of the Lord. God don't care about no bishop's title. God don't care about no apostle's title. He don't care about no elder's title. Pastor, you know I'm a doctor now. Well, good for you. And I'll call you by your title. Whatever you're doing, I'll call you what you tell me to call you. Is that all right? Whatever your title is, hallelujah, thank God. You probably earned it. And if you earn it, you ought to thank God for it, give God praise for it, and, and, and be proud of it. Is that all right? But God is looking for ordinary people with diligence toward the things of God to do exploits for him. How many of y'all know, come on here, hallelujah to God, you, he just looking for down to earth, ordinary people, uh, hallelujah to God, if y'all would, go back to me, go back to me, go back with me to, hallelujah to God, I want to show y'all one more thing, and I'm done, and I'm done, I'm done, hallelujah to God, uh, go back to Proverbs, let me make sure, let me get it first, before I tell you to get it, hallelujah to God, somebody said, I thank God for the word today. Take it with a sin of slowfulness. Yes, sir. I don't want to be slow for anymore. Uh, hallelujah to God. No, I don't plan on being slow for anymore, Pastor. I don't plan on being the last one to come through the doors of the church. Lock the door behind me. I'm the last one. No, sir, Pastor. I want to be one of the first ones in. Uh, hallelujah. Because I don't want to be a slow for and a sluggard. Come on here. Uh, I didn't, then listen, I'm not saying you're a slow for just because you're the last one in. I'm not saying that. Uh, hallelujah. But tell your neighbor, it would be nice to come to church one time and not be the last one in the door. Let's look at the Bible saying that I'm done. I'm done after I read this. Huh? The soul of the diligent huh? shall be fat. Huh? And the word fat means to grow fat and become prosperous and to become satisfied. Huh? But I also want to tell you also what it means. Huh? How God, I praise you. Huh? Tell your neighbor it also means. It, huh? it also has three more definitions. When you look it up in the Hebrew, huh? it means to be anointed. Tell your neighbor to be anointed. Huh? And it means to be great. Greasy, tell you but to be greasy uh, and to be oily, uh, and it also means to take away the ashes. Uh, tell you but to take away the ashes. Uh, I'm telling you, when we are diligent toward God, I uh, uh, tell you, neighbor, we are anointed. Uh, tell you, neighbor, look at you with your anointed self. Uh, I don't care if they say you may not be able to hum. Uh, tell you, neighbor, you may not be able to hum, uh, uh, but you're still anointed. I uh, uh, tell you, neighbor, you're greasy. Uh, 
and you are anointed uh, because you're diligent. Uh, but I come to tell y'all today uh, that the anointed take away the ashes. Uh, what do you mean take away the ashes? Uh, if you read in the Old Testament, uh, the fat belongs to the Lord. Uh, uh, brother, brother Andrew, the ashes belong to the Lord. Uh, and how many know after the sacrifice, uh, they would collect the fat uh, and they would collect the ashes uh, uh, and they would put them in pots and vessels uh, and this was the signifier uh, how many of y'all know what you do with ashes uh, that ashes is good uh, for keeping the fire going uh, uh, I tell you neighbor the fire may look like it's out uh, but if you stir up the ashes uh, tell you neighbor the fire keep on going uh, but God told me to tell you uh, that the diligent uh, take away the ashes uh, what are you saying pastor uh, it is the diligent uh, their fire never goes out uh, what are you saying pastor uh, I may have uh, a promotion on the job uh, but I got the ashes uh, I may be diligent uh, on my job uh, diligent in my marriage uh, but I'm also diligent uh, in the house of the Lord uh, and I got the ashes uh, got my new car uh, but I still got my ashes uh, got my new house uh, tell me how pastor uh, how you still serving the Lord uh, even though you got your new house uh, tell me how pastor uh, how you didn't get high minded uh, when you're driving your new car uh, I got the keys uh, to my new car uh, but I got the ashes uh, the diligent uh, has the ashes uh, what are you saying pastor uh, long as I remain diligent uh, I still got the fire I still got a fire to pray I got a fire to praise the Lord I got a fire to seek the Lord and to seek him early I got the fire tell your neighbor the diligent keep the ashes I got the ashes and when they look like things are getting rough that's why last week I told y'all stir up, uh -huh. stir it up, uh -huh. can you never stir up, uh -huh. stir up what, uh -huh. the ashes, uh -huh. anybody in here, uh -huh. You gotta keep being diligent. I know you're going through a trial. You're going through tribulation. But you got the ashes. Remain diligent. Diligent in prayer. Diligent in praise. Diligent in seeking the Lord. Diligent in serving the Lord. Sometimes we wonder how was it gonna work out. But the diligence said. I don't know how, when it's gonna work out. I, I don't know how, how it's gonna work out. I, but the diligence said, I'm gonna wait on the Lord. I, and as I wait, I, discouragement I, try to come in. I, but I remember I, I got the ashes. I, what are you saying, Pastor? I, I know how I, to stir up I, my own fire. I, I know how I, to stir up. I, thank God. God, huh, for Pastor John, huh, thank God huh, for Minister John, huh, but I know how huh, to stir up huh, my own praise. Huh. I thank God huh, for Pastor Fleetwood, huh, knows how to encourage you, huh, but I learned how huh, to encourage myself because huh, I have. Huh, the ashes uh, and the fire uh, keep on burning uh, and burning uh, through it all uh, it keeps on burning uh, through every trial uh, through every tribulation uh, the fire uh, keep on burning uh, tell your neighbor uh, the diligent uh, has the ashes Your neighbor got the ashes. 
tell your neighbor you got the ashes now. You got the ashes now. And your fire now, ain't gonna never go out. Now. Yes, sir. May have to cry. Now, but the fire now, is still burning. Now. I may not now, understand God. Now, but I want y'all to know. Now, but I got the ashes. Now, and I still uh, know how uh, to run after God. Uh, I still got it in me. Uh, Job said, uh, it's not my help. Uh, is it not in me? Uh, what are you saying, Job? Uh, I'm diligent. Uh, I done lost everything. Uh, but I'm still diligent. Uh, and all I got to do uh, is stir up the ashes. Uh, stir up the ashes. Tell your neighbor I got the ashes. I mean, you know, at, at the end of the sacrifice, the Lord said, get the ashes. Bring me the ashes. What was the ashes a sign of? The ashes was a sign of the sacrifices burner. I have accepted the sacrifice, but put the ashes in the vessel because the fire is still burning. Tell you, but the diligent have the ashes. Uh, and long as we have the ashes, Long as we are anointed, long as we are greasy, long as we are fat, slowfulness can never find us. Because how many are always looking for us? Oh, slowfulness is looking for us. But tell your neighbor, it'll never find me. Because I'm diligent. Give God a hand, grace. Hope and pray is something I said today that you will receive it as a word from the Lord and that it will cause you you that are slowful it will cause you to run and go after God like never before tell your neighbor this is a simple thing it ain't hard it's not hard listen figuring God out is simple man don't 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 be too deep. Don't try to be too deep. Where Brittany at? Brittany, throw your hand up. Brittany posted something that was powerful to me. It was so powerful. So powerful. I'm not gonna go into all the details, but she asked God why. Why? And she said, God is so funny. That God told her back, you never asked before the situation. God said, if you would ask before the situation, I would have told you the answer. But you never asked. You just went and did what you're going to do. You did and did what you did. God said, I would have stopped you, but you didn't ask. And she said, God is so funny. You know what that tells me? That tells me Brittany know the Lord. That tells me Brittany knows the voice of the Lord. Don't be too deep with it. Pastor, I just, Pastor, I just want, I just want to know the voice. Sound like muddy waters? No, 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 no. Sound like you're talking to another person. That's what it sounds. Like. That are having conversations with God. Time I look up with God, say, "What you gonna do for me?" I'm about like Abraham. Hey, what you gonna do for me? Yeah, just talk to him. And he is funny. In actuality, he's a character. That's why I tell you he's over the top. He is. What you gonna do for me? Man, he start listening to stuff. He tell God, I get it, man. Okay. You could have stopped at the second thing. I got it. But no, oh no, no, no. You asked. And I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> oh God. He's awesome. He's so awesome. Do y'all hear me? He's awesome. And I'll, Sister Brittany, I'll double and triple what you said. He's one of the most funniest persons that I know. Yes, he is. Hallelujah to God. Learn to talk to him. 
learn to just talk to him. Long, learn to have conversation and commune with him. It ain't that deep, y'all. I'm telling y'all. It ain't that deep. Don't make it seem like it's something ooh, spooky deep and mixed, mystical and, and magical. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't like that. Just talk to him. And then with some of our problems, we've got to learn how to shut up and let him talk. And just meditate on him and let him talk to you. Man, he know how to calm you right on. Anybody ever been just so upset? And you just shot up and, and just laid back and let the Lord just talk to you. And let him just minister to you. And as he ministered to you, it seemed like everything just got better. You had an ease of spirit. He just eased you right on down. Only God. God knows how to do it. Give God a hand praise if you don't mind. I hope and pray something for you by way of Facebook. We thank y'all for watching us. We're getting ready to go by way of Facebook. If anybody want to give, Minister Sheree is going to put the cash app symbol up. If anybody want to be a blessing uh, in the house of the Lord, the cash app symbol is going to go up. And we thank God for you. But listen, we're getting ready to go. Somebody asked the question, is any word from the Lord? And I want you to know that yes, there is a word from the Lord. Until then, we'll see you on Wednesday night for Bible study at 7 o'clock. Be blessed of the Lord. Come on.